I received this question last week, and I realized this is a very common question and very reasonable question. Take a look at it. Why did God create Adam and Eve, knowing they slash we in them would fall, knowing all of the havoc that this choice to create them would make? Now, it is legitimate also to ask this question. This could have been for, a, for another section altogether. But does God know things? that are hypothetical. Does he have knowledge of hypothetical things? And the Bible's teaching is yes, he does. He knows everything, including hypothetical things. Pastor Paul, where do you get that? There is a story where David and his men helped a city called Kela. And there was news that David's enemy was coming to destroy him. And that, he, that this enemy knew where he was in Kela. He prayed and asked God, if, we, if I and my men stay here in Kela, will the people of Kela hand me over to my enemy? He asks this question and God reveals his answer saying, yes. David and his men did not stay in the city. They left because God told him that if, hypothetically, if he were to stay in the city, that this, the people of the city would turn him over to his enemy. So yes, God knows everything, including things hypothetical. Then God had to know that if he created Adam and Eve, then Adam and Eve would fall. Adam and Eve would sin. And we would fall into this terrible, terrible condition of a fallen and futile world. Okay, so the question is, why? Obviously, the answer is not, God didn't know. Oh, let's see what happens. That's not the answer, obviously. And if we were to answer, because God gave them free will or the power of choice, that is not much of an answer either, because then you would have to be forced to ask, then why did he give him that choice at all? And that kind of goes back into, into uh, uh, infinite regress. I don't think that's the way that the Bible uh, addresses this anyway. I think the Bible has a much better answer for why God did what he did. Many times when we ask questions about wh of why, uh, why did God do this, that, or the other, often we are not told why. And God is not under any obligation to tell us why. The hidden things belong to God. The revealed things belong to us. And by God's providence, to some degree, God has revealed why. He allowed, the crea he, why he created Adam and Eve and allowed them to make the choice, the terribly wrong choice, and throw this world into a world of futility. Romans 8, 20 to 21. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Now, walk with me for just a minute. It was not, I see it as, the, as a reference to the creation, even though it's kind of weird to speak of creation having a will, but it wasn't the choice of creation to fall into Futility, or to be subjected to futility, to fall into a cursed condition. But God was the author of it. There was somebody else behind it because of him who subjected it. God subjected it. Ultimately, God is the one who is writing the story. He is not responsible for sin or the sinful choice like Adam and Eve and we who are the characters in the story are. But he is responsible from the standpoint that he wrote it in. That this is the story that he is telling. And what a beautiful story it is. Because he subjected it in hope. Or that word hope is a much stronger concept than what we speak of when we say, I hope so. Because this is God's plan. This is God's goal. This is what he is planning, hoping, and planning to accomplish. And because this is God's hope, God's plan, it's going to happen. And this is the plan. 
that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. It's telling us a lot here that all of creation now is caught up in the beautiful story of redemption of God's love for us, that God would accomplish His love for us in us, and that all of creation will be caught up in that salvation work, and that all of creation will not only not be subject to futility anymore, but will be caught up into the glory that God will reveal. When we enter into the freedom that is truly our birthright, the completion, the fulfillment of the work that Jesus has accomplished on the cross. On the cross. When this question was asked, why it was a little bit more to it. And this person asked it very, in a well thought out way. That is, Adam and Eve, knowing Adam and Eve would fall, And eventually, that Jesus would have to die. Why would God do it? I want to answer it this way. God allowed this. God created Adam and Eve so that Jesus would have to die. So that Jesus could die. The Bible in another place even says it was God's pleasure. For Jesus to die. That he might raise him again from the dead. That he might ascend into heaven. Send the Holy Spirit. Fulfill his forgiving, redeeming work. Cause us filthy, sinful people. Sinners lost and condemned. And redeem them. And so showcase his power. Showcase his love for us. If Adam and Eve had not fallen, where would we see this grand display of God's love for people like us that even sends the angels' heads spinning (laughs) forever? (laughs) It is that marvelous. God chose to create Adam and Eve so that Jesus would express God's love in this magnificent, beautiful way and redeem all of humanity and creation with it into a greater state of glory and the glorious display of his love than would have been otherwise. That's the answer. In response to this, let's sing his praise together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship Your holy name. Sun comes up, it's a new. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. 
When my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still, my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years, and then forevermore. Forevermore. Bless the mysterious glory in our spectacular failures. In the face of spectacular evil, you display your spectacular glory, your greater glory. And because of our fall, you accomplished the cross. We celebrate you and your wisdom beyond our imagining. We celebrate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.